Hey, it's a Tuesday night here, uh, about 8 o'clock at night in um, Dubrovnik. I, maybe you heard the last of the bells ringing just a moment ago. I wanted to do a little travelogue for you and tell you a little about this place because it's one of my favorite places to visit. I'm in the country of Croatia. It's a member of the EU. Uh, it is uh, hugs the coastline of the Adriatic, across the Adriatic, basically from Italy. So if you took a boat off the, the, uh, the eastern shore of Italy, you would hit Croatia. It's very much like Italy, except the coast is much better preserved. It's not built up with high rises, and uh, they've really preserved it a lot. Um, I'll show you a little bit of the Adriatic in a minute, but I'm talking to you now from, well, what is basically the Champs-Élysées, the main boulevard of, uh, of Dubrovnik, and I'll show it to you here. This is it. It's called the Placa or the Stratum. I've always called it Placa, but these days people, everybody here seems to refer to it as the Stratum. It's a grand boulevard for walking. There's no traffic here. There are no cars allowed in the old town of Dubrovnik. The old town of Dubrovnik is one of the best preserved, well, it's the, it's, it's the best, it really is the best uh, preserved old town in, uh, in the world. It's a UNESCO heritage site. It is surrounded by huge, huge stone walls uh, that were built in the 14th century. Prior to that, this town got famous and got rich. A lot of kids here, by the way. Got famous and got rich by uh, being a seafaring and a shipbuilding town. We'll see the Adriatic in a minute. But this is it. This is the Champs Elysees. This is the Placa. And people walk up and down here day and night. Now, we will tell you that this, this old town of Dubrovnik, there's a new town around it, but the old town, um, can get really busy in normal times. Now, we're just beginning travel after, pre -co after COVID, so we're sort of the post-COVID travel here. Uh, and one problem during regular times is that huge cruise ships pull in here. On average, about 8,000 people flood this old town, which is not that huge, uh, uh, during prime time tourist season. Four ships, 2,000 each, you got 8,000 people. Fortunately, they generally leave to go to have dinner on their ships in the evening. And this, during prime time, is the best time to visit, the evening, like after dark, like after 9.30 or 10. First of all, these streets that are all made of limestone, or not all of the streets, but the streets here, the placa is, the, uh, the, the stratum is, is all limestone. It shimmers, it shimmers under lights at night, and it is just stunning. It's like a bejeweled street. Um, I'm standing in front of the most famous building here, this clock tower you can see behind me. Uh, it was built, believe it or not, in 1444. Now, it's been restored a couple times. It's been restored a couple times, but uh, there it is. I don't know if you can see sharp enough. It gives the time there, actually, on the uh, column, uh, right above that poster for an opera. Well. Uh, you can't see it. It's those two little gray rectangles there. It tells you the time in Roman numerals. Uh, so it's V-I-I-I-0, 8 o'clock straight up. Um, now, most of the tables out here, I'll walk over to a couple of the bars. This city is filled with restaurants and bars. By the way, the population of Dorovnik generally, the metropolitan area, is 42,000 people. How many people live in the old town? 900. In that case, in that in, in, in that regard, they're sort of like Venice. You know, Venice is a beautiful city, a, a tourist spot that can be just as overrun as here or Barcelona or Amsterdam. Uh, but very few people live there. Uh, locals here have found that they can make more money by renting out their homes to tourists, and then they can live outside of town and get a bigger house for more of the price. The houses here are very old. The city is very old. As I said, the walls. Uh, the walls were finished in the 16th. Did I say the 14th, 16th century, um, and 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 uh, 5,000 people used to live in this old town, but in the old town portion. But uh, in 1991 and 1992, for just about a year, war broke out here. Uh, neighboring countries. Well, there was this grand plan to make Serbia one big country. Remember when Yugoslavia broke up? It was a mess. And we are down by the water, and behind this town are high mountains. Might be too big. Oh, I don't know. They're mountains. Uh, there's a cable car you can ride up, by the way. And when you get up there, you'll see uh, the decimated walls uh, where a couple hundred very brave Croatian guys stood off armies uh, of the Serbian forces who 
from their perch way up in the mountain would lob shells into Dubrovnik. And they also had sharpshooters who would try to pick off people walking down these wide streets. Uh, about 100 soldiers lost their life in that, about 300 civilians. And uh, it was not a pretty thing, the breakup of Yugoslavia. Uh, while, while that conflict ended in 1992, there were occasional, for about four more years, uh, outbursts of uh, people bombing the city. Um, you can tell when you're on the hill looking down on the walled city of Dubrovnik, all, this, all the uh, roofs are, I can't show you because I'm down here, all the roofs are orange tile. You will notice some orange is brighter than the other. Those are, those are roofs that were repaired after the shelling of Dubrovnik. Um, there was a worldwide uh, crusade to raise the money to do that. And you'll see darker orange, much older orange tiles. Those houses were not, uh, didn't catch on fire, were not bombed. Um, but this city survived for nearly a year with no electricity and no outside water. It was not an easy time here. This is 1991, 1992, not that far, far away. Um, let me tell you, the, the architecture is stunning here. I think you can just tell from the buildings here. I'm back on. I'm back on. I don't know what happened. Uh, I was telling you that the buildings around here within a one minute walk, get past the kids playing soccer here, uh, are, are in the Baroque, Romantic, and uh, Rena Gothic, uh, excuse me, Baroque, Baroque, Renaissance, and Gothic styles. You can find them here. And if some of these buildings look sort of familiar, maybe you were a, uh, a big fan of that uh, Netflix series, um, whatever it was called. <laughs> the... Uh, Game of Thrones, right, Game of Thrones. I didn't watch Game of Thrones, but uh, much of it was, well, a lot of it was filmed here, in fa including the famous scene, I'm told, on the steps leading up to a, uh, a Jesuit church called, uh, they're called the Surly Steps, but now they're called the Steps of Shame. And apparently that woman with the white hair, and uh, I'm sure everybody who watched the series is laughing at me, the woman in Game of Thrones was, uh, was uh, I think stripped sort of naked and put on the steps while crowds yelled shame, shame to her. And I can tell you there are people always out there taking pictures saying these are the steps, these are the steps from uh, from uh, the Game of Thrones. They're actually called the Jesuit steps because they lead to a Jesuit church at the top. And Game of Thrones was filmed in various locations around here. Um, you will find stores selling Game of Thrones t-shirts, napkins, keychains, uh, uh, beer signs, uh, glasses, everything, you know, every every touristic tchotchke you can think of. Oh, I should tell you before I leave this area that uh, these uh, bars that I'm looking at here, the chairs, well, I don't have to show them to you. I can tell you the chairs usually are facing out because people like to sit here and watch folks walk by, just like they do in the Champs-Élysées and some of the great boulevards in the world. Um, today, the chairs are all turned in toward the building because they all have big screens out because the soccer game is out, is on. Now, we're about to be on. Sadly, last night, Croatia lost to Spain 5-3, to three, but we're hoping for better results tonight. Although, I don't know if Croatia's playing. The game has not yet started yet, and I'm not up on who's playing. Um, but I think you get an idea of the magnificence of, of, of this main street in town. This is an ideal time to be here, because this is not many tourists. This is pretty light. If you come in during the day, during prime season, when tourism returns, when the cruise ships return, it's it's cheek by jowl. And despite the, I don't know, maybe a hundred restaurants here, it's uh, it's hard to find some place to eat sometimes. Um, I've been lucky enough to be here sort of as one of the first visitors, not first, obviously, but one of the early visitors coming back to Dubrovnik 
So I've had no trouble with restaurants, and there's some great restaurants here. Uh, seafood is the primary offering here, although you can get your filet mignon and hamburgers and all that sort of thing. Good ice cream, good seafood is what Dubrovnik's known for. I want to walk you around to the old port. There are two ports. One is the new port where the big cruise ships come to. Uh, we're going to go to the old port where the fishing boats come into, and also touristic boats. There are boats that take you out to some of the islands here um, uh, for, uh, for, for a day or for a few hours. Um, by the way, that bell tower was built in 1444. I think I told you that, right? I'm looking at my notes because I tried to put this together. To give you an idea of how popular tourism here is here, there are 25 rental car companies uh, here in uh, Dubrovnik. All right, we're coming out now to, here's one of the ice cream places. Now, you're familiar with those in Italy and France and, and elsewhere in Europe, but they are particularly proud of their, their ice cream here in, uh, uh, here in Dubrovnik. I'm coming out to the old port, and you can go from here uh, out to uh, an island very nearby. You'll be able to see it when I show it to you, called Locrum Island. It's where the nudist beach is, but it's basically a nature preserve. And there's in the middle of it a, uh, a place you can go swimming uh, called the, the Dead Sea. That's just a name for it. Uh, but Locrum Island is, uh, is where these boats will take you or a little further. Here are some of the boats. Now, this is the Adriatic. The Adriatic is said to be twice, the salinity of the Adriatic is said to be twice that of the Mediterranean. Uh, I was swimming here yesterday, just around the corner. There's a, I mean, you can dive in in about three or four different places here, right from the old town into the Adriatic. And I was swimming yesterday, and you literally can, you don't even have to tread water to uh, stay afloat. And I was on my back, and I could, uh, I didn't have to do anything. The, the salinity, the, the salt content of the water keeps you up. Uh, and it's very popular among the locals. So is Locrum Island, which is around the corner from this building. So I'll walk and see if you can see it. But you can see some of the fishing boats here and some of the leisure boats. There is that's sort of a low wall of the old city there. Uh, if we were at the other end of the uh, the the boulevard, the um, the stratum or the placa, what I call the Champs Elysees of uh, Dubrovnik, if we were at the other end of that, the walls are enormous, really high and thick, and that's really what kept the city uh, largely intact during that 1991-1992 conflict. Uh, those walls were strong for the, for their day in the 16th century, and they're still huge. They're just enormous. This is not a town for exploring much if you cannot walk a lot of steps or have trouble walking generally, because it's really, I mean, these houses up here are up high. And there's a lot of walking and a lot of steps. I can attest to that. My legs have never gotten a workout like they have the last two and a half days I've been here. No, oh, I thought you could see the island of Locrum from here, but you can't. Basically, it's a very green island. You can't see the nudist beach from uh, from Old Dubrovnik, but it's out there somewhere on the other side, I think. Uh, but these boats will take you there. Here's some more of the fishing boats. So you can see the mountains here behind behind the town, I hope. Yeah, you can. And it was atop these mountains, um, right up about there, uh, that... Uh, that the fighting raged from. Um, the, t the, mount the top of the mountain up there is called, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm still in the boats, aren't I? Up, to up, top, up top there. Are called, uh, mount it's called Mount Sud, like absurd, Mount Surd. Mount Surd is where uh, the Croatians dug in and managed to hold off uh, their Serbian uh, attackers. Um, so now this country is, uh, I'm going into Montenegro um, on this trip, which is nearby. Uh, I got to tell you, I've probably vi visited Croatia five times, and I've always wanted to, wanted to go into Montenegro. But if you ask a Croatian, hey, you want to go to Montenegro, they say, you don't want to go to Montenegro. No need to go to Montenegro. So I never have. This time I'm going to. Uh, I'll report from there at some point as well. But uh, I've got to tell you, there still is enmity between Bos uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, which is uh, over this hill here that I just showed you. By the way, I don't know if you can see a cable. Well, the cable car, I'll, I'll show it to you if it starts running down. Uh, the neighbors over this hill, that's Bosnia-Herzegovina. And uh, uh, what used to also be part of Serbia, which is Montenegro, 
um, is down this way. Only about only about 28 kilometers from uh, this city, so it's an easy drive to the border. And you can pass between borders, and people do. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's still some hard feelings. Um, trying to wait for the cable car here to show it. Anyway, the cable car is about $27 round trip. You can take it to the top of Mount Sue, and you'll see a war museum there. You'll also see the defense walls that are, are pretty much shattered uh, from that war. Um, on a happy note, right at the top is a gorgeous white tablecloth restaurant that gives you the picture postcard view you often see of the old town of Dubrovnik. You're looking down at the town, you see the entire uh, old thick walls going around it. And of course, the, the, the tops of houses and churches and so on. Um, I'm going to walk back into the, to the main street, see what's going on. Let's see, I've made some notes here. Let me see what else I can tell you about. Oh, by the way, uh, one of the most popular things to do as a tourist is to walk the old walls. They're so thick that there's a huge pedestrian walkway. Well, huge, it's probably six feet wide. Uh, that circles the city, and you can walk the entire walls. I've done it a couple times. I think I paid $10 last time I walked it. I can tell you now the price is $30. There are a lot fewer people walking the, those old walls than normal, but uh, it's worth doing because it gives you such a great view of the city. You can see inside the tiny, tiny backyards of some people. Very little grass here, very little trees. It's a lot of stone, a lot of stone. In fact, apparently in the olden days, if you were entering the town, of Dubrovnik, you had to bring a stone with you to get in because they needed stones to build. So well, that's a pretty clever thing, actually. Uh, a lot of outdoor dining. A lot of outdoor dining. A lot of seafood. Prices are not as expensive as eating in a, in a U.S. restaurant by any means, um, but they're a little higher than if you were eating elsewhere in Croatia. Uh, Croatia is a great country. You should not, if you can, can afford can manage it. Don't just go to just visit Croatia. Zagreb is the capital. It's inland. Uh, up north from here is Split, which is a great city with a great old palace in it. Um, and then to the north are the islands of Croatia um, that are beautiful, beautiful. I've heard sailors who have spent you know weeks and months just sailing from island to island. I think you can hear the birds in the background, can't you? Again, I'm coming. Uh, I'm coming out to the. Uh, uh, again the main street um this is a gorgeous i hope you can see this church here is fabulous uh and again the sort of main main uh signpost is the of this of, of the city is the uh, clock tower here Uh, I mentioned something about the food being largely seafood. They make great wines in Croatia, white and red, but particularly white. Um, and they're very, very well priced. In fact, if you know uh, Grigic Vineyards in Napa, Mike Grigic is Croatian, born in Croatia, and he has a vineyard here. And uh, he, he is sort of single-handedly up the game of Croatian vineyards by bringing some of the French and American uh, wine-making uh, practices here to Croatia. In fact, I tried to order a bottle of British wine last night at a restaurant, and they were sold out. Um, but the logo is almost the same. Obviously, it's written in Croatian. Uh, but uh, if you enjoy his Napa wine, you'll enjoy his wine here. But, but you can buy bottles of white wine and red wine for dinner for, you know, $15, $10, $20. And British isn't going to cost you a little more because it's a big status name here. But it's a great town for eating and drinking. Let me show you... Off this main street are, are, I don't know, maybe 17 alleys with steps. You know, I told you you need to be able to uh, mount steps here. Uh, let's go down one. Let's go up one here. Hello. 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 Oh, by the way, English is widely spoken here, so you won't have any trouble in that regard. Uh, but you'll see, you'll see on many of these alleys small restaurants like this right out here in the alley. I hope I don't lose the picture here. I don't know what... I frankly don't know why I'm even online now, um, but it's a miracle. Uh, but you can go either side of the uh, placa, and uh, on both sides you'll see these alleys with uh, with shops, small shops, restaurants, people doing their social media. But this will give you an idea of the steps here. As soon as these folks pass me by, I'll show you. This is, by the way, one of the shorter flights of steps. 
Do you see that? I don't know. See, I'm trying to can't focus this like a camera. This is not it's not particularly long steps. You can, I mean, there are major steps here. Big, tall, stone steps. This is called Eat Street here. Big, good evening. I will at some point. Thank you. Yes. I know. You have meat and fish and great wines. I understand. Right? You're on American television. Keep talking. I'm too fat for television. You uh, were just got your head. You look very handsome. Just get audio. That's all. So you're glad to see tourists come back, I would gather. And they're just starting, aren't they? They are, and they are, we're expecting more in July. From 3rd of July, approximately 40 planes a day. Right. Americans, more Americans, and more people from the UK when they lift restrictions on July the 19th. So hopefully it will be better than it used to Yeah, be. UK visitors are the number one of foreign visitors. Yeah. They're followed by Germany, I think. That's right, Germany. Then you have Italy, Poland. France. You know, of European countries. France. And then America. Well, yeah, they five. like Americans because we spend more money, I've been told by, by folks here. Is that right? Well, it comes to average spending, yeah, Americans, British, number one. Okay, thank you. Enjoy. So this is called Eat Street. Or we, I call it Eat Street. Do you guys call it Eat Street? Uh, we call it uh, Restaurant Street because you've got like 14, 15 restaurants in a row. Okay, Restaurant yeah. Street, we'll call it that. Thank you. Enjoy. So you can see it's a little early for dinner, 8 o'clock here, so not many people are out eating yet. As you can see, it stays light for a long time till about 9.30. Hi. Uh, but this is Eat Street, and the restaurants are endless. This goes for about probably 10 blocks. Here you go, another steps. And as I say, these are some of the not-so-high steps. It's a great, if you want to get in shape, this is, come rent a place here for a couple months and walk up and down these steps every day, uh, because there are only several main gates that come in, in and out of the city. So you have to go to one of the main gates. And if you live, as most people do, up these steps, more steps, more restaurants, and more steps down. Now it looks like the uh, football game, the soccer game has begun. Um, yeah, you would get a big workout if you lived here because you have to walk up and down to get to the gates that lead out of the village. Um, I mean, out of the city. The, uh, the main gate, by the way, um, has a drawbridge that would be drawn up back in the old days every night to protect the local populace, obviously. Uh, they don't draw that up anymore. And there are a couple of restaurants there that overlook another fort, a medieval fort, basically, that uh, is lit up dramatically at night. There are a lot of great romantic places to have dinner here, not just in the old town, but right outside the old town on the wall. Anyway, I hope this gives you an idea of... Uh, I mean, there are mod there's a Hilton right outside the old gate, a very modern Hilton. There's a Sheraton, about a 10-minute Uber right away. Uber is here. Uh, so there are a couple of American hotel chains. Um, there are any number of hotels. There are any number of small hotels. There are a lot of apartments to rent here. I mentioned to you that, that uh, many of the residents of the city have moved out so that they can rent their apartments during the season. Um, I'm a little further up back down. There's the bell tower. You can see it. 1444, that bell tower. And then up here, we're right... On the, whoops, sorry. Almost ran into these women. Uh, right here is the Plaka, or the Main Street. You can see, uh, I hope you can see the tower at the end there. I wish uh, we had time. It takes about, probably, probably take me 10 minutes to walk to the main gate. Um, and since we're just doing a short thing here, uh, um, I'll probably spare you that. But suffice it to say, you've probably seen pictures of Dubrovnik looking down on the city with the beautiful... Uh, Adriatic behind it. It's just a stunning sight, and, and uh, like places like Machu Picchu, it's one of the iconic, uh, one of the iconic shots of uh, places for tourists like to go to. Troika is very popular. Again, America doesn't want to stop here. America makes numerous of visitors here. The Brits are, followed by European folks, Italy, French, and Germany, particularly Germany. Uh, but Americans are, are, are well liked here. English is widely spoken. Uh, you'll feel very welcome. You will have great food to eat, generally speaking, great wines, and there's great history here. I've only touched a little about on it, but you can read up before you come uh, to Dubrovnik, um, or you can certainly uh, buy guidebooks and see more. Anyway, I hope this is uh, some help and whets your appetite a bit. I hope I wasn't too jerky. I'm holding an iPhone. Uh, as I say, I don't know what broadcast this darn thing, but it's fine with me.
Anyway, I'm Rudy Maxa. Oh, by the way, I always put a plug in. If you'd like to, to subscribe to my newsletter, I write about these places, some of my favorite restaurants, and I'll write about it in the book. Um, it's free. It's every other week. It's, uh, it's, it's editorial stuff. It's, it's me, my sort of thoughts on travel and what's going on and what countries are opening and how to maximize your frequent flyer miles, all kinds of stuff. If you'd like to receive that newsletter, just go to maxatours.com, all one word, maxatours.com slash newsletter. Put in your first name, your last name, your email, you get free. It's every other week. We won't cram your mailbox and stuff. Uh, and I hope it's, I try to write an interesting newsletter so that you'll read it two weeks later. Lovely talking to you today. Um, keep in mind, we are broadcasting in June of 2021. I know this will stay on YouTube and, and uh, Facebook, but for the rest of my life, we're way beyond my life. Um, so keep in mind, as I talk to you about post-COVID travel and the amount of tourists here and so on, uh, I am talking in late June of 2021. So, but the historical stuff doesn't stay the same, doesn't change. The old bell tower is still always going to be built in 1441. The walls, these huge, thick walls, will have been built in the 16th century. And this street, which becomes magical when the lights come on, is unforgettable if you come here. It's one of the great walks of the world. Anyway, from uh, Dubrovnik, I'll see you later. I'll talk to you from, uh, I'll talk to you from uh, my next country. Okay? Thanks. Bye-bye.